Your what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. Now, this news actually came out yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to talk on it. I was in class. I did speak on it last night on the Just Chillin' podcast, though. So if you guys want to see that a little bit, go over there, check it out. But it didn't get its own video. Uh, Daniel Jones doing what he did last year which is showing great leadership and showing you know great work ethic and self-worth to the team and how much he believes in this team he once again for the second year in a row is taking his teammates down to a spot to unofficially train with them and you know the throw the football around get familiarity with them build chemistry with them and just train now, like I said, this happened last year as well, um, but last year it was in Texas, and it was with some help from Colt McCoy, which um, whenever I talked about Colt McCoy in the backup QB position, I always said, I want McCoy to stay here. I want him to continue to be our backup because as the backup last year, he was not required to help the team out or help out, you know, to stutter or help out the offense in general with these unofficial training sessions, but he did anyway. He was the one of the guys that helped secure a field down in Texas through his connections at the University at Texas, because, you know, Texas Hook'em Horns, that is where Colt McCoy went to, um, and he helped us secure that spot. Now their Giants are down, well, not the Giants, Daniel Jones, the receivers, and a few linemen are down, along with some tight ends in Arizona, and I have a unofficial source, I'm just kidding, it's just kind of cool that he does this, it's Blake Martinez, that when I asked on Twitter randomly, I know they're down in Arizona, I know that Blake Martinez has facilities down in Arizona, for those of you that don't know, last year when he was signed by the Giants and he was training because of the whole COVID situation, he was training by himself, him and his dad had already built basically like a large football facility down in Arizona, with, you know, complete with a weight room and a football field and everything, you know, it's like a private facility that Blake Martinez has. And so I was like, well then, are they going to be down there at Blake's facilities or is it somewhere else? And all he did was respond with the um the eyes emoji so i'm not sure if that's confirming it i'm not sure if it's denying it hey maybe it gave them the idea they're like yo we could just go over to blake's place and uh, practice there because they're gonna be down there for a week anyway i mean we shall see but yeah quickly to kind of list off the guys that we know are gonna be there will be dj obviously from the uh offensive line standpoint so far only gates and hernandez have been confirmed I want to say most of the wide receivers, definitely Kenny Galladay, which by the way, this is going to be the first time that uh, Daniel and Kenny Galladay are going to not only see each other in person, um, but also, you know, meet and play some football together or, you know, just throw the pigskin around in person. I hope that Evan Ingram is going to be there. And by, with each hour that passes on Twitter, you see like a new confirmed um, tweet of somebody saying that this player is going to be there as well. Saquon's already in Arizona because he's been doing his ACL rehab and recovery down there with, um, with Odell down in Arizona. He won't be participating, but he might, you know, he might pull up a couple of days, you know, just to be there with the guys and whatnot. John Ross was working out with Darnay Holmes around in uh, California, I think. And I think John Ross is going to make his way over there. Um, like I said, most of the receivers are going to be there. Sterling Shepard, obviously, he's always there with the guys. Um, I expect Slayton to be there. Um, I already said Evan Ingram and whatnot. This is just a way for the offense to build up some chemistry together and to legitimately get some much needed practice with each other coming off of a year where well it's not entirely their fault but they do shoulder some of the blame of being one of the worst offenses in the league second worst only to the new york jets um they're gonna need to put in a lot of work this offseason to get their act together and then of course we already know the giants hired russ calloway and whatnot and that's gonna help them as well an offensive assistant that they got from lsu who had a hand in that historic lsu offense in 2019 with joe burrow and joe brady we'll see how it goes it's all building, you know, essentially for a nice bounce back year for the offense. The defense is going to continue to be good. And I'll say this, the defensive guys, they're not slacking either. Now, in my opinion, it's harder to do a group workout thing like this with the defense because they play a lot more um, 
different positions that could actually be a bit independent of each other. Yes, it still plays off of each other, but it's not really like one big machine with cogs in place like the offense. Like the defense, they, they can train by themselves. But I will say, Leonard Williams, shout out to him. Essentially, since Afidi Odenigbo was signed by the Giants, he's been working out with Leonard Williams down wherever Leo works out. I already mentioned Darnay Holmes and John Ross. I'm sure the linebackers have their thing going as well. Maybe they get they all get together for one big unofficial team scrimmage. I don't know, but this is nice to see from the offensive side because it's much, much needed. Personally, the thing I'm most excited to see, even though we're not going to see it, is the connection between Galladay and Jones. I want to see how they're going to build it. If maybe it's going to be rocky at first. Hey, maybe they just connect right away at first, like a snap of the fingers. Because to be fair, DJ did have that connection with Slayton. And to some extent, he had that connection with uh, Sterling Shepard as well. Like he, he has good throwing connections with both Sterling Shepard and uh, Darius Slayton. I wouldn't be surprised if he immediately connects with Kenny Galladay. We'll see what happens there. I also expect for the linemen, notice how they only took inside offensive linemen because I'm sure he's gonna be practicing snapping the ball with Nick Gates and whatnot. Uh, Hernandez down there, I'm not sure who they're going to have running up against Hernandez, pass rushing him. Maybe they're going to work on footwork or something. But yeah, I really expected only our center and Gates to be down there because unless, like I said earlier, you get the defensive guys to come over, there's not really much of a point in them being there other than working on footwork and agility, in my opinion. You're going to need somebody to actually be trying to pass rush against them for these offensive linemen to get their work in. We'll see. I mean, can you imagine... If that's what's happening, if eventually they're just like they call up the defensive guys and they just have one big unofficial scrimmage, is that allowed? I don't know if that's allowed. I feel like it shouldn't be, you know, not allowed. Like, that would be pretty cool if it is, though. And uh, I guess the overall thing about this is that DJ is continuing to show that he's a leader. But this is not a surprise to me and it shouldn't be a surprise to any Giants fan because he did it last year and he's continuing to do it. A lot of young quarterbacks are, and a lot of young quarterbacks that are having success have done this. Just last year as well, of course, was Josh Allen. He did it with Stephon Diggs and his guys. He set them up in hotel rooms. They were throwing the ball around. They obviously went on to have one of the better offenses in the league. Uh, Kyler Murray, he did it last year as well. Daniel Jones, of course, like I said, did it last year as well. These young quarterbacks that are in a position to be that franchise guy, that franchise player, and in a position where they realize they need to take another step, which is exactly what Daniel is in right now, um, they're putting in the work to try and get as much out of themselves as possible and much out of the offense as possible. And I will say this, DJ is set up quite well this year. He's probably set up the best he's ever been in his career in terms of weapons. You got Kenny G, you got Saquon coming back from the injury, uh, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton. As of right now, that's the wide receiving core. It could improve in the draft. You got Evan Ingram and Kyle Rudolph out at tight end. The offensive line still needs to be proven, but it's crazy as it sounds. It's still the best he's had since his entire career, college included. And then now on the coaching side of things, they have Jason Garrett, who I don't have too much faith in, but I'm gonna cut him some slack. Maybe he improves in the second year. But then we also get Russ Calloway from LSU, the offensive assistant. And earlier this offseason, one guy was promoted to offensive assistant, and that was Freddie Kitchens as well. You're gonna have a lot of minds in there working on the offense. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a too many um, a situation where it's like too many chefs in one kitchen and it more so turns out to just, you know, a lot of scientists in a room and they just get the answer really quickly. But he's set up quite well and I expect him to take the next step and he's doing his part. But put your thoughts down below, let me know what you think. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.